Do you ever look back on your past relationships and feel like you were tricked? Does it feel like in those relationships there was so much confusion and misdirection that your head was literally spinning? And if you would have just known what was actually going on at the time, then you wouldn't have made the mistake of wasting all of your valuable, precious time. Well, we can't change the past, but we can work on the future. Which is why on today's show, we're going to discuss eight ways men confuse you to use you. That way, all of the tricks and schemes will be so crystal clear to you that you'll never get played again. Number one is love bombing. If you're someone who enjoys validation, if you're someone who enjoys that attention, it's going to be an easy way to manipulate you. They understand that the thicker they lay it on at the beginning with their compliments, with how much they want to be with you, with how much they want to build with you, with how seriously they, they're taking this in this relationship and how fast they want to build. They want you to move in uh, next week. They want you to be their wife in the next couple of months. Like it's just like everything is moving at breakneck speed and you start thinking to yourself, that's amazing and it makes me feel amazing, but it feels a little bit phony or it feels a little bit quick. And usually when a guy's love bombing you, this will be his response when you ask him that. He'll say, I don't even need to know. I can just feel it. Let's feel on each other. Can you feel my lower extremities? I want to feel your lower ex Not what actually makes sense or is real, but feelings. Why? Because the process of love bombing is to get you in an emotional state where you're not paying attention to how little things make sense around you. And you're only paying attention to how good it feels to be doing the thing. Because it's meant to put you in a euphoric state where all you can think about is how this is just like your Disney princess movie. That they don't want you to be focused on the things that actually are questions still in the relationship. Like, how could you know you want to make me your wife in the span of two weeks when all we've done is go out on a few days? dinner dates, when he's love bombing you, the more he expresses that to you, you're going to begin to feel guilty if you don't reciprocate those feelings back to him. And so you're going to try to muster up and literally create feelings in yourself for this guy that don't actually exist simply because you want to mirror his a same passion and excitement for you and see when you're moving things along at breakneck speed you're not pacing yourself you're not going to be thinking about boundaries you're not going to be thinking about building you're just going to be thinking about doing everything in one day and what's going to happen when you do everything in one day you're going to do even the the girlfriend treatment and the intimacy parts in one day number two is future faking i consistently sell you on the idea that we're building up to something, even though in reality, we're never actually building up to anything real. I just talk about us building up to something real. And the hope that that gives you is what motivates you to keep going through the mud with me in this situationship, not knowing what things are. Let's say in the process of us talking, uh, you, you were coming over to my house a lot. And so we've been going on two or three months of you just coming over to my house. Yeah, we smash, we have a little bit of chit chat, we watch some Netflix and you're like, look, uh, I kind of want more than this. I kind of want to build on a relationship that's serious. Like we got to go out on some dates. We got to do more than just sit in your house. And I tell you, yeah, you know, I want to take you out on a date. I want to take you out to this fancy spot. I just got to, I just got to save up some money or I just got to do this one thing. And once I get this one thing or I get this one job, then we'll start going out on dates. But for now, I just, I got to work on this thing or I got to work on my business or I got to work on my friendship. I got to work on my, and lo and behold, you're like, oh. Oh, you want to take me out to Nobu? That's okay. I wait. I wait. I happy. I wait. I wait. I'm excited for Hibachi. I'm excited for Nobu. I wait. And in the process of that, you're still coming over to his place. You're still smashing until you finally realize once it's been three more months that all the dates that he promised you he would take you on still hasn't materialized into anything. It's just been chitter chatter, hoping to eventually see that future that I discuss with you. And the craziest part about it is every time you realize that it's not happening, I just give you a different future to look forward to so that you can latch onto that and not be concerned with the fact that the last thing I gave you hope for didn't even materialize itself in the relationship. Uh, number three, let's talk about with the withdrawal in order to elicit the response of you chasing after them. 
when you come into your relationships and you start to like a guy and you really like this guy, you really want this relationship to work with this guy specifically. Meaning that if things start going wrong or he starts acting up, you, you really still want this to work. And so you start trying to do his job for him. So for example, let's say me and you are dating. I have an issue in terms of keeping my word as it relates to dates. And I say, I want to see the zoo. I've never been to the zoo and I, and I want us to go so badly to go to the zoo, pet some, pet some dolphins, pet some uh, giraffes and zebras and all that good stuff. Every time I talk about it, I'm like, yeah, okay, we'll go next week, like Tuesday. And when Tuesday comes, I am a no show. And you're sitting there like, wait, what, what happened? I thought we were doing Tuesday and you're texting me and you're calling me and I'm nowhere to be found until Thursday comes. Oh, ah, uh, yeah, my bad about Tuesday. I just got real caught up and real busy, but let's, yo, we got to go to the zoo soon. When they withdraw like that, then you start feeling like, oh, well, I need to compensate and do the work for you by, uh, let me plan the date instead. Let me, uh, make sure, okay, we're going to go to the zoo on Wednesday. Okay. I'm free at this time. What time do you finish work? I'm going to call you the night before I'm going to text you the night before. I'm going to make sure that I plan and schedule and I book our reservation at the zoo and I make sure I get our tickets. Or if you're anxiously attached, it very easily gets you to start pushing forward towards him, doing more for him and working for him. And what happens? He gets to sit back, relax, not say or do anything while you give him everything you've got. But if you withdraw also and take a step back also and you wait it out, I know it's difficult, but this is why I say you have to get your hobbies and your passions and your life fulfillment in order so that it won't be as painful because you're not just sitting on your bed tearing up, uh, smelling his sweaters. He's going to realize, oh, I withdrew and she withdrew also. She's not coming running to me. So let me get my stuff together because if I withdraw for too long, she's actually going to forget about me and move on. Number four, guys are going to play dumb. One of the best ways to confuse you is to pretend as if I don't understand what your issue is, then I don't have to take accountability for my actions. Because if I can't comprehend how you would have an issue with that, then I can escape accountability for having to apologize or uh, stand up for the fact that I did you wrong. Let's say he starts talking to another girl. Let's say he sleeps with another girl. Let's say he takes a whole nother girl out on a date or is messaging another girl. He can pass everything off as, oh, I didn't know. If you would have just told me you didn't like me going out on dates with other girls, I would have not went out on dates with other girls. If you would have just told me that you actually wanted us to be exclusive and you actually were trying to build it up to be a real relationship, but you didn't tell me and I didn't know, so I couldn't, I couldn't, I couldn't do anything. It's a great way to confuse you and to the point where you feel like you can't even have a problem with the thing. And so what happens? They continue to be issues. And in a lot of cases, those issues get even worse, which is why you need to have a clear understanding of what your standards and expectations are. And the guys that are pursuing you, you let them know if you can't meet those standards and expectations, that's perfectly fine, but you will not have access to me. Now, you, like I said, you don't have to say that, but this is what he starts to feel. Okay. This is number five, giving attention to other girls in front of you. It's very strange, but if you've ever had it happen to you, you know what I'm talking about. Whether it be the way they compliment them, the way they flirt with them in front of you, the way they even talk about them to you. In some cases, it might even be your own like best friend or a girl that's close to you or your sister in some weird, strange cases. Guys will use this trick to trigger your own insecurity that once again, it will kind of have you chasing after him. They'll show attention to other women that you'll start to feel like, hey, do you not see me over here? I'm, I'm standing right here. Am I invisible to you? What do I have to do so that you'll see me instead? And so what happens again? You start trying your hardest to be noticed by him. You start trying to do front flips and back flips and cartwheels and scrubbing the floor in your maid outfit, trying to show him, hey, don't look over at these other girls and pay attention to these girls. Please pay attention to me. I'm the girl that you want to be with. I'm the girl that you want to be in a relationship with. I'm the girl that you want to marry. Remember, remember me, don't you see me? Remember, I always tell you guys, the most attractive thing you can do for guys is to do nothing. But the least attractive thing you can do is to try and do everything and try and do more so that he'll see you and notice you. If you are going to embody the dream girl, you are not affected by the attention he shows to other girls. Uh, now let's talk about overwhelming. How guys will <laughs> overwhelm you with emotions of how much they wanted to see you or they missed you or wanted to be with you to try to Im immediately stimulate seeing you right now in the second. If I pick up the phone 
and I call you at uh, 2 a.m. I just finished at the club. Ooh, I was I was grinding up a storm at the club. Girl, you know I. Girl, you know I. Y'all, I don't like that we don't talk no more like that, girl, y'all. You know, the way I'm just thinking about you, like, I can't I can't get you off my mind. I just feel like you did something to me, yo. I don't know what you did in my mind. I don't know what you did in my soul, but you touched me. Tell me something. I'm trying to see you right now, babe. Please, let's talk. And then what do you do? You you fold like a cheap lawn chair. Because I guarantee you, when the guys call you like that at the 2 a.m., it's not like they were speaking to you all week. And then it's like they're almost making up for lost time by pouring on all of these emotions and all of these feelings that, well, where did these, you didn't really even seem to have these last week when you weren't texting me or calling me. All of a sudden, you have these feelings of how much you desire me and want to be with me now, right now in the second. And they'll overwhelm you with the emotions that they they feel so that you'll become emotionally overwhelmed as well. And then what are you gonna say? Yeah, okay, come. Instead of allowing him to come over that night, tell him, this is very simple. Let's do this in two days during the day. That's when I'm free. And then let's see what he responds like. Next, we have stringing you along so that you'll consistently feel like something might happen or is about to happen or just be in a state where you're in so much limbo that you don't even know what decision to make. You don't know if you should leave the relationship because it's not working and you don't know if you should stay in the relationship because it is working. You're just in limbo. Let's say for example, you're uh, dating a guy and in the process of you dating a guy, you're, you're going through this talking stage and, in the, and, and let's say two, three months into this talking stage, you realize that he's been talking to another girl from a different city. And when you call him out on it, you're like, hey, you're talking to another girl from a different city. And he's like, yeah, we didn't talk about being exclusive. So I thought we were able to date other people. And you're like, what? I've been sleeping with you for three months. And you're talking about you didn't know we weren't talking to other. <gasps> See, cl clarity is the enemy of any guy who's trying to use you or take advantage of you. Truthfully, I'll be honest with you. I'm telling you this because I know because I've used the strategy. If you have a lot of clarity and there's a lot of clarity in our relationship, there will be a lot of understanding of what the expectations and the standards are. So when someone makes a mistake, it'll be clear that they made that mistake knowing that it was a mistake, which speaks to intention. See, the thing about it is, when there's a lack of clarity and there's confusion, you can't speak to what my actual intention was when I make a mistake because I can pass it off as a mistake based on a lack of information or a lack of understanding. But when there's clarity, and I make the mistake, it speaks to the fact that I intended to make that mistake despite knowing the consequences for that mistake or the potential consequences for that mistake. You give him clarity on what you expect from him. If he is not prepared to meet that expectation, you get tossed to the side. There's a thousand other men lined up and ready to access me that would gladly meet my expectations. This is why I say you write down your wish list in your notebook about what you want and what you expect from a relationship. That way no guy can come to you and and and, and uh, try to string you along and you're hoping that maybe he'll show you what it is that you wanted or show you what it is that you were expecting to see. You already know what you want and what you're expecting and what your standards are, and you're determining are you gonna meet those standards and expectations or not, molding their personality. Guys will get a real deep understanding of what it is you want and what it is uh, you wish for, what your dream uh, relationship would be like. And for a lot of them, they're just using that understanding to play the role of the person that you're looking for. That way, you'll be convinced that they're the person that you're looking for. That way, you'll sleep with them, you'll be with them, You'll give them access to your squirtle very quickly, easy, and painlessly. And when you finally do, they will unzip that Prince Charming suit and reveal themselves on who they actually are. They'll step out of the Prince Charming suit and they'll give you a thumbs up and walk out that door forever. I always want you in the process of building relationships with guy, you know what you want, okay? I want you to be very crystal clear on what you want, but I don't want you to start going out and telling guys exactly what you want. I know it sounds toxic, I know it sounds stupid, and I know it sounds manipulative, but the, the issue is when guys know exactly what you want, a lot of them will give that to you in order to sell you on a dream. But if you're vague with what you want, right, it will allow them and force them to have to actually show you their real personality and just hope and pray that their real personality is actually what you're looking for or make assumptions, neither of which will necessarily be specific to you. 
and give them the playbook on exactly how to trigger you. And when I say trigger you, I just mean actually get deep into your heart, right? Like, for example, if you say, oh, my God, in all my relationships, I've never had a guy who gave me flowers before or bought me flowers. I, I would just love to be in a relationship where a guy would would take me out on a date and, and bring me flowers before we go out on this date. I've just never had a magical moment like that. And I've been dreaming of a moment like that since I was a young girl. And no guy has ever done that for me. When you say that right at the beginning. And a guy's thinking to himself, huh, I love to get in that squirtle. I love to get access to her real quickly. And so what do you think he does on the next date? He brings flowers for you and he brings it on the date exactly like you described. And while that's good in theory, what also is happening is now you're in belief that this is your guy. And I don't want to scare you by making you feel like every guy who will do good things for you is actually trying to trick you. But I do want you to understand that some guys are going to do that because they understand that that's the way to your heart. And the way to your heart is also simultaneously the way to your squirtle. So the more vague you are, you actually force guys who are really interested in you to actually show their interest in you by doing things and taking action on that interest.